shop. Hey everybody, my name is Greg Sloan. This is another episode of Drum Power. Thanks for checking in. We are coming to you from our teaching facility in Ludlow, Kentucky called Drum Power. For those of you, again, this is a new channel, so a lot of you are not aware. We're just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, about five minutes outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. In this episode, we're going to talk about things that beginning drummers need to know. So if you're very, very new to the instrument or you haven't even played before but you're interested in learning how to play, this is a good episode for you. This is for the beginners. I'm joined with a guest of mine today. He's one of my youngest drum students here at Drum Power. This is AJ, seven years old. Say hey, everybody. Hey. And he's going to help me demonstrate some of these things for the beginning drummers. Now, he's actually been playing for a couple of years, but um, just wanted to have a student come in and kind of show you how they're approaching these things, even when they're a young drummer. And you can see the difference in the coordination and the development as you go through these things. So the first thing we want to talk about is most basic of all, how do we hold the drumstick? Okay, so we're going to use what we call the match grip, which means both the hands look the same. That's why we call it match, right, AJ? Um, there is another popular grip called traditional grip, which is a little more advanced, and maybe I'll do an episode on that in the future, but for this one, we're going to talk about match grip. So first thing you want to do is you want to find the balance point on your stick. And what I mean by that is not where the stick itself is balanced like this, but where the stick wants to bounce on the drum without you having to work really hard to get that done. So if I'm holding the stick too high and I release the stick, you can see it doesn't really want to bounce at all. If I'm holding it too far back, it'll bounce, but it dies really quickly. So I want to find that sweet spot somewhere in there where that stick wants to bounce and work from. Okay, go ahead and try that. Go ahead. Okay. And where that stick is wanting to bounce, that's where we're going to put the thumb flat. Go ahead and put your thumb flat there. Okay. And so the thumb flat in that area, fingers wrapping around, second finger wraps around as well, third and fourth finger wrap around. Now, most people will tell you that the balance point is right where this first finger is and the thumb is. However, I think it's actually more where the second finger is. And you will feel that as you start developing stick control, as you, you know, get some time on the instrument, you're going to start finding that the balance is more on that second finger. But of course, the grip to be controlled, our thumb and first finger have to be in contact at all times. Um, a couple other things about the grip. We don't want the thumb extended. That would not be good. I'm sorry I'm putting my hand in front of your face, but I'm showing the camera. We don't want the thumb extended. We also don't want the thumb dropping down like this. And you see that a lot in beginning drummers. So you just want it more flat on the stick, just the pad of your thumb, and the fingers wrapping around. Now, as far as grip pressure, you're squeezing firm, but not too tight. So this space that you see between my thumb and first finger, you want to try to keep a, a gap there. If you see this, where it's closing off, you're probably holding the stick too tight. It's okay if they want to touch a little bit, but you just don't want it tight. So anyway, that is the grip. And of course, it's match grip, so you're going to do the same thing on the other hand. Okay, let's show them how to hit the drum. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate this first, and then we're going to have AJ show you this on the snare drum as well. But first of all, when you're hitting a drum, you want to think of tapping the drum, not pressing into the drum. So this would be what we don't want to do. This would be a press. This is also a press. And in both cases, you can hear it sounds kind of weird. What we do want is to tap the drum. And notice when I'm doing that, that we're using the wrist we're getting a good wrist flex to make that happen. So if I have a flat wrist, it tends to be a press or even like a, a mush kind of a sound like that. But if I'm really using that wrist and flexing it properly, I can get a good clean tap. So that's real important. Hold your stick properly, 
use the wrist, and get a good tap. So let's try that, AJ. Show us a good tap on the drum. Good. Let's do it with the other hand, too. Good. So once you're feeling that, that you're holding the sticks good, good proper balance on the sticks, and you can get a good clean tap, now we can do some basic rudiments. Okay? You ready to try these in a second? All right, I'm going to go first, and then you're going to go. So the first one's called the single stroke roll. That's one hit on each hand, right, left, right, left. I'm going to show you this from slow to fast, but again, watch the wrist action. And AJ, you need to watch this too, because when it's your turn to go, you want to be focusing on this wrist action. Okay, here we go. One hit each hand. Notice the clean tap. As I'm speeding up, I'm keeping that wrist flex going. I'm staying relaxed. Okay, you stop show us on yours from start. Good. Now you may have noticed as he got to a certain speed, his wrist got a little stiff. And that's normal as you're developing as a new drummer. It's it's hard to keep this flex as you go faster. Your your body wants to straighten out. And you can see he was doing that a little bit. Started, um, started slower and gradually speeded up see that and then get to, to a point as fast as you can go but start slow all right let's see that okay play it longer for me please good so there saw improvement already on that wrist flex but that's real important you got to develop that good clean taps and gradually speed that up Okay. Now the other rudiment we want to do is called the double stroke roll. This is another one you're going to develop this wrist action and learning how to allow the stick to do work for you as you're speeding this up. I'm going to do this from slow to fast so you can see it and then our, our helper here today, Mr. AJ, is going to do it for you as well. But we're going to start slow and gradually speed it up. This is two hits on each hand, right, right, left, left. This is the double stroke. The wrist as it speeds up, it stays relaxed. You can see it's just nice and comfortable and relaxed. It takes a long time to develop that, but you're just trying to feel this. And the reason I can get it to that fastest stage is because I'm allowing the stick to do what it wants to do, to bounce on that drum, and I'm controlling that with that wrist action. Okay, now AJ has not been playing, obviously, anywhere near as long as I have, so he's going to demonstrate the double stroke roll for us now. Go ahead and show us the double stroke. Start it. Good. Now you can see there, as he was getting to about this speed, where I'm still just really focusing on the wrist flex, he started getting a little more of the full arm going. And that is part of that process. He's learning to use less of this full arm action and more of the wrist. And that's going to enable him to get a lot faster in the future. Okay, so those first two rudiments, single stroke roll and double stroke roll. The single, again, is right, left, right, left, over and over. The double is right, right, left, left, over and over. And both of those, you want to focus on good, clean taps on the drum and learning to use that wrist flex. Okay, so a third rudiment that I want to go through for beginning drummers is what we call the paradiddle. And that's one of my favorite rudiments because it's a really musical rudiment. And as you get more advanced and more developed on the instrument, you can move it around your entire drum set and you can have do some really fun, cool sounding things with it. But a paradiddle is actually a combination of those first two rudiments that we talked about, the single stroke roll and the double stroke roll. So the sticking for a paradiddle is right, left, right, right, and then the other side, left, right, left, left. So you can see what I mean 
what I'm saying it's a combination of those two because it's a single single double and then a single single double on the other side. Probably the thing that most beginning students have the most trouble with on this rudiment is they like to rush that double. In other words, play it twice as fast as the singles. And that's a mistake because they're all supposed to be the same speed. You are doing a double stroke, and then we do the other side. But those doubles are the same speed as the singles. And a lot of beginners have trouble with that. They'll end up playing it like this. You really want to be careful not to do that because as you speed that rudiment up, if you're doing it like that, you can't get into a good flow. So remember, it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Everything is smooth and even. So just like we talked before with that wrist flex, having a good grip where we can control the stick and our wrist is, re wrist is relaxed and we're getting that good flex, I can just play this rudiment from slow to fast. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left. Keep it smooth. You know, we can just keep it nice and smooth and the wrist is relaxed and we get that paradiddle sounding really good. All right, AJ is going to show us the paradiddle how he's working on it right now. Let's see yours. Good, keep going. And so you can see he's really focusing hard on keeping that rhythm clean. So he's not going to let that double stroke play twice as fast as a single. He's trying to really keep that even. And that way, when he gets a little more control with that wrist, he can actually speed it up. And he can do a lot more with it once he gets that kind of comfort level. Okay, so that's pretty much all the basic beginner drummer stuff that I wanted to cover in this first video with you about the beginning drum stuff. Um, there's a lot more we could go over, like talking about reading some basic music, like quarter notes and quarter rests, eighth notes, eighth rests, sixteenth notes, sixteenth rests. Uh, we could talk about basic drum beats, like the first one that AJ was actually playing when we started this video. Uh, where he was playing eighth notes on the hi-hat cymbal, playing quarter notes with his foot on the bass drum, quarter note with his left hand on the snare drum. So that's a beginning basic drum beat. Um, but we'll save that for other videos. There's a lot of material for you to go through right now, I think, in this one. Again, let's go through it. Proper grip. Make sure you have a good grip. Make sure you have a good clean stroke, that you're tapping the drum, using your wrist, good clean taps and then work on your single stroke roll, your double stroke roll, your paradiddle. Get all of those kind of things starting slow, gradually speeding them up. Try to get all those rudiments to where you feel like you're learning to control the stick. That's what a beginning drummer needs to do at first. So anyway, I think that's going to cover everything we're going to do in this video. Thanks again for checking in on this channel. We're new to this, so if you like what we're doing, please like the videos, sub subscribe to the channel, um, leave us comments. We'll try to get back to everybody, and um, we'll see you next time.